In this mini lecture, I'm going to talk a little bit about exponential growth and decay. Uh, to start with, we can uh, think of a one-celled organism. Uh, many one-celled organisms reproduce by splitting in two, um, so that uh, one organism splits into two and becomes two organisms after a certain period of time. So let's keep it simple. Let's say we have some sort of amoeba that just splits into two every day, and we could keep track of you know, which day we have and how many organisms in this table here. So day zero, when we're first starting, there's the one amoeba. At the end of the first day, so starting day one, there would be two organisms, that one amoeba split into two. At the end of another day, both of these split, so it goes from two to four, four to eight, eight to 16. If we plot those points, we get these points over here, that are in the in the graph, and um, when we look at that, that looks a little familiar. We've graphed that kind of thing before, um, and in fact, if we look at this here, I could write an equation for these points if I have y equals 2 to the x, uh, because if I would plug in 0, for instance, 2 to the 0 power is 1. If I plug in 1, 2 to the first power is 2, 2 to the second power is 4, 2 to the third power is 8, and so on. So we really have this type of exponential growth. As it turns out, as long as a population has certain characteristics um, that the growth is uncontrolled, um, there's enough food or shelter or whatever the population needs to reproduce, um, and that can just happen naturally with no limits, uh, we usually get this type of exponential growth uh, with that kind of, of a curve. It also happens with things that aren't populations. Um, uh, money can grow this way, or, or a general economy for a, country, for a country can grow in this manner. Um, you know, compound interest works this way. Um, also, when we get into decay, we'll see that there are quantities that decay naturally. Um, one example would be a medication that you take in your bloodstream. Um, after you stop taking that medication, the amount in your bloodstream starts to lessen, and it has an exponential character to it. Um, because of that, then, we get this general model called the exponential growth and decay model right here. We've got a equals a sub zero times e to the kt power. Uh, a here is sort of standing just for amount. So the amount of some quantity that's present is equal to this function here on the right-hand side. We'll talk about what all these letters are on the next page. Now, I just put in uh, the function a equals e to the natural log of 2 times t. So notice there's nothing in front of the e. That's where my a sub 0 is. So this would be a sub 0 equals 1. My k would be this natural log of 2, and t is just t. If I plot that, this is what I would get, this graph right here. Notice that the points on this curve are exactly the points that we've got up above here. So, you know, I've got 0, 1, I've got 1, 2, I've got 2, 4, I've got 3, 8, and I've got 4, 16. Those are exactly the same points that we had up above. Um, and so this type of model can definitely capture this type of growth, which something like an amoeba uh, would have, perhaps. Let me go to the next page here. Okay, so here are some graphs. All of these, I've just let a sub 0 equal 1, and I've got various values of k. So here's k equals 0 0.02. It starts here at 1 on the y-axis and goes up sort of slowly. k equals 0 0.05. It again starts at 1, but this time it goes up pretty quickly. And then if k is negative 0 0.05, it starts at 1, but it doesn't go up. It actually goes down. So... I've sort of summarized this. All the graphs start with a y-intercept at 0, 1. The first two graphs have positive values of k, and they're increasing. The third graph has a negative value of k, and it's decreasing. So, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to sort of think, wow, I guess then if k is greater than 0, I get an increasing function. If k is less than 0, I have a decreasing function. Also, the second graph here has a larger value of k than the first graph, and it's increasing more quickly. 
That leads us to conclude that this value of k must somehow be related to the idea of the rate of change of this function. How quickly is the function changing? In fact, we can say this. If k is greater than 0, we call k the growth rate. If k is less than 0, it's called the decay rate for this exponential model. We can even show that this value of k is exactly like an interest rate for compound interest. So when we have this k equals 0 0.02, we can actually say that's a growth rate of 2%. A k value of 0 0.05 would be a 5% growth rate, whereas if I have a negative, that would be a decay rate, and this would be a 5% decay rate. Um, we saw all these started at the point zero 0.01. Uh, what about this value a sub 0, which is in front of that exponential model? Um, does it have significance? Well, we can see that here. What happens when we let t equal 0? So here's my starting model, right? So my starting model, a equals a sub 0 times e to the kt. If I plug 0 in for t, well, k times 0 is just 0. And then anything to the 0 power is 1. So we just get that a is equal to a sub 0. So what that's showing, the amount that's present is just equal to this a sub 0. That means a sub 0 is the amount of the quantity that's present at time t equals 0, because I plugged t equals 0 into this function, and I got that as the amount present. So this at the bottom here sort of summarizes what all of these letters represent in this exponential growth and decay model. A is just the quantity present after some amount of time t. A sub 0 is what's present at time t equals 0, sometimes called an initial value for A. If k is greater than 0, that's a growth rate, but as a decimal, right? So 2% would be 0 0.02. If k is less than 0, it's a decay rate, again as a decimal. And t is just the time that's passed since the start of all of this, which we represent with t equals 0.